this video, we're going to be taking a look at um, AP Calculus AB questions dealing with accumulation functions. All right, so the main thing that needs to be pointed out here is this would be your question. There's usually part A, B, C, D. We're going to definitely do part A and B. Um, B and D is relatively straightforward, so we'll probably just do A and B here. All right, now on the original question, this um, graph is labeled graph of F. So this graph of G prime that I have typed right here um, is not originally on there. They want you to know what this notation means. All right, in the directions, all right, of an accumulation function, you're probably going to see something very similar to this. All right, now if you can read this and you understand what it means, then that's how you can conclude that the graph of F is also the graph of G prime. All right, now taking a look at this, we integrate the derivative to get back the original function, all right, because they're inverse operations. So we integrate the derivative to get back the original function. So if my original function is G, then this F right here also has to be called G prime, another name for it, okay? So when you are doing this type of question on the AP test, you're gonna wanna indicate G prime of X is equal to F of X. You write it somewhere on your answer, all right, cheat so that they know that that is the same. All right, you can also label the graph, graph of G prime, all right, that, since that's not originally there. Okay, now out of um, these two questions, I think part B is more straightforward, so we're gonna do part B first, all right, and then we will go to um, the part A. All right, so on part B, they're wanting G prime of negative three. All right, so G prime of negative three. Okay, that's a straightforward. If I, if I know that this graph is also called G prime, then I just go to the X axis, I go to negative three, I go up to where it hits the graph and I see what Y value spits out and that's a two. All right, so that one is straightforward right there. Okay, and then the second part of that is G double prime. Okay, so G double prime at negative three. All right, we'll stop and think about this. If I have G and I'm going to G prime, I'm basically taking the derivative. Okay, so it's there again. If I am at G prime, this graph is G prime, and I want the G double prime, I just need the slope. I take the derivative. All right, I need the slope. All right, so in other words, for this one, I need to find the slope at negative three. Okay, so right here at negative three, it's a straight line. So my slope there is going to be go up one and over one. So that's just going to be a one. All right, so that's how you think through that. Okay, now let's go back and do question A. All right, um, find the values of G of two and G of negative two. All right, now the G function has been defined right here. So if I plug a two in here, G of two, then when I evaluate this function, I'll be plugging a two in for that X up there. Okay, so let's go ahead and just do it right here, I guess. So let's go G of two. All right, I'm gonna use how they defined it and I'm gonna say, okay, this is the integral from one to two of F of T dt. All right, so basically what is this? Well, it's called an accumulation function because why? Because the integral accumulates the area under the curve. All right, so since I really don't know what any of these are, I'm gonna have to use general shapes here. I need the area under the curve from one to two. So if I come up here, here's one, here's two, all right, the area under the curve would be right there. So basically it's triangle. So I can calculate the area of a triangle based on one half base times height. Okay, now notice that it is below the x-axis. All right, so it is gonna be a negative area. All right, it will be a negative area. So I can either just you know, know that it's gonna be negative at the end, or when I do my base times my height, that height right there will be a negative um, actually, let's see, if this is one, that'll be a negative one half. Okay, so I can put that in my formula, it's gonna automatically come out as a negative in that way. So one half base times height, because it's a triangle. All right, so then one half times the base is one. And then like we said, if we wanted to throw in, that's a negative one half coming down here. All right, and we'll then definitely have a negative one fourth area right there. All right, now, for the second part, this is G of negative two. All right, so calculating G of negative two. All right, again, based on how they define the G function, that'll go from one to negative two of F of T dt. All right, and as we know about our integrals here, we can't go backwards like this. We, that bottom one's gotta be the smaller one. If I want to reverse them, I gotta throw in a negative. So I'm gonna have 
a negative integral from negative two to one of f of t dt. All right, so let's come up here and look at what we got. We're going from negative two all the way to one. I want the area under all of this, okay? I think I'm gonna switch colors here. All right, so here's negative two, here's one. So the area under the curve out here would be this triangle right here. If I go all the way up to the one right there, then I'm looking at the area under um, in that half a circle right there. So I've got a triangle and a half of a circle. All right, and this one's gonna be positive. This one's gonna be negative, okay? So overall, I'm gonna take this minus this, okay? So I have to remember that, I'm gonna come over just a little bit. Negative one is out in front there, all right? So triangle, okay? So the area of the triangle, which would be one half base times the height minus the area of a circle, uh, one half of the area of the circle. I'm just messed that up. So one half pi r squared, okay? All right, now we just go up to the picture, come up, get our dimensions here. All right, so the base of that triangle is one. So negative one, one half times a one. The height is three. And then minus a one half pi. And then the radius of that semicircle right there is gonna be a radius of one. So that's just gonna be one right there. Okay, so we have then a final answer of a negative distributing that, negative three halves, negative times negative would be a plus pi over two. Okay, so um, accumulation functions, all right, as long as you understand that that accumulation function tells you that this is also called the graph of G prime, that helps tremendously, all right, you can use basic shapes of basic geometric shapes to calculate the area of anything for the graph of G, all right, and then G prime and G double prime, all right, is pretty straightforward as well. All right, C and D there is just talking about some horizontal tangents, all right, we know that horizontal tangents are where the derivative, all right, what's horizontal tangents of G, so where G prime is zero, okay, well, horizontal tangents would be there and there then, okay, so that was pretty straightforward. And your reason is because um, if it's a positive or negative, this goes from positive to negative there. So when um, the derivative changes from positive to negative, you know you have a relative max. All right, right here at one, it's negative and it stays negative. So there's no change. All right, so this um, here at x equals one is neither a max or a min because the sign doesn't change. So again, straightforward there. All right, and then part D there, points of inflection, all right, uh, points of inflection are going to occur wherever, again, that um, the F prime changes. Well, if this is the graph of F, all right, F prime would be the derivative there we could look at, or G double prime, whichever way you want to look at it. So your points of inflection are going to be here at negative two, all right, and then here at zero, and then here at one because I go from my derivative of f goes from uh, positive to negative here, it goes from negative to positive here, and then it goes from negative to positive here. So you've got changes there. So those are straightforward. We didn't really need to write anything down there. All right, the main two things are the part A and part B.